So far we have been discussing the accounting of the lease in the books of the lessee. It's time that we discuss now how a lease shall be accounted for in the books of the lesser. Yes, now the principles of accounting standard 19 which you are very well versed in will be finally applicable. So far we were not classifying the lease into finance lease operating lease. We know under accounting standard 19 we are classifying leases into finance lease or operating lease. But under NDS 116 as far as lessee is considered we do not have the concept of finance lease or operating lease. Now that we are discussing how the lease shall be accounted for in the books of the lesser, we will finally look into the classification of the lease. Just like accounting standard 19, NDS 116 is also identifying leases as finance lease or operating lease in the books of the lesser. So whenever a lesser is entering into a lease agreement, at the inception of the lease, a lesser is expected to classify the lease into finance lease or operating lease. So what exactly is a finance lease? A finance lease will be understood as such kind of a lease which will transfer substantially all the risk and rewards incident to ownership to the lessee. We are putting it in this way that as a lesser, you are the legal owner of the asset. Okay, the asset is legally owned by the lesser. But the benefits of the asset that will be enjoyed by the lessee, the risks of the asset will be borne by the lessee. If this is the kind of arrangement that you have, we will consider this as a finance lease. So in spite of not being the owner, the lessee is as good as the owner. Legally speaking, lessee is not the owner, but the benefits of the asset enjoyed by the lessee, the risk of the asset borne by the lessee, if this is the kind of arrangement that you have, consider it to be a finance lease. So a lesser will classify this as a finance lease in its books. Now, what are the instances where such kind of a lease is possible? Yeah, discussing over here the accounting in the books of the lesser, as I said, at inception of the lease arrangement, Lesser shall classify lease into either finance lease or the operating lease. So this is something that is to be done at the inception of the lease itself, right? What is a finance lease? As we discussed, it is a lease that transfers substantially all risk and rewards incident to ownership of an underlying asset. It will be transferred to the lessee. And then they say, under any one of the following situations, a lessee shall be, uh, sorry, a lease shall be classified as a finance lease under any one of the following situations. See, they've used the word situations. Do not consider this as conditions. These are situations. Any one situation is getting fulfilled and it can turn out to be a finance lease. Situation number one. Ownership of asset is transferred to lessee from lesser at the end of the lease term. You pay the last installment of the lease rent and the title, the ownership will get transferred from the lesser to the lessee. If this is the kind of arrangement that you have, we will consider this as a finance lease. You know, if you really uh, closely uh, analyze this thing, they are saying ownership of asset is transferred to lessee from lesser at the end of the lease term. This looks very much like a higher purchase transaction. You know, this is what happens in a higher purchase transaction. You pay the last installment and you become the owner of the asset. So higher purchase transactions basically will be considered as finance lease as far as NDS 116 is considered. Next, buying option is available to the lessee at the end of the lease term and it is reasonably certain that such buying option shall be exercised. So in the first situation we were seeing you pay the last lease rent and you will become the legal owner of the asset. Here you pay the last lease rent, but you are not automatically becoming the legal owner. Instead, you are given an option that do you want to buy this particular asset? And as a lessee, you are reasonably certain that you will exercise this particular option. Why? Why will you be reasonably certain? Maybe the buying option that has been given, it is given to you at a rate which is below the market rate. 
For example, let us say there is some office premise that you have taken on lease and let us say the lease is for eight years and at the end of the eighth year you are given an option to buy that particular asset. The lesser says that whatever is the market price at that time at 30% discount I will sell it to you. So you are reasonably certain that you will exercise this particular option. You feel this is a real good deal. For eight years, I will pay the lease rent, agreed. But at the end of the eighth year, whatever is the going rate, only 70% of that is payable by me. So since I will be enjoying a discount, I am reasonably certain as of now that I will exercise that particular option. So I know one thing, that although for eight years I am not the legal owner, but because I will buy this asset at the end of the eighth year, then I will become a legal owner at the end of the eighth year. My behavior from day one, although I am a lessee, but my behavior from day one will be as if I own that particular asset. My behavior will be like that, okay, it is me only who will enjoy the benefits. It's me only who has to bear the risk. The leased asset is of a specialized nature. It's a customized asset that only the lessee can use it. So that is also turning out to be a finance lease over here. Uh, the lesser has manufactured or the lesser has uh, built up an asset which is as per the needs of the lessee. Only lessee can use this particular asset. So even if the lessee returns back this particular asset, the lesser will have no alternative use for it. And that's the reason the arrangement of the lease will be done in such a way that the lessee can enjoy all the benefits of that particular asset. See, as a lesser, I have no alternative use of it. So I will transfer this asset to you, an asset which is customized as per your requirements. And I know it very well that this asset can be used only by you. So it is very natural that the benefits of ownership will be in this case enjoyed by the lessee. Yes, they are saying lease term covers major part of the useful economic life of the leased asset. Major part. They have not defined what is major part, but we will understand this as 75% or more. Let us say the useful economic life is 10 years, while your lease is for 8 years. Think for a moment. Useful economic life is 10 years, where the lease is for 8 years. You are getting the asset for the major part of the useful economic life. So, whatever are the benefits of ownership, naturally you are enjoying it. Think in this way. Let us say the lease is, think in this way, that the lease is only for 2 years. The useful economic life is 10 years, but this asset will remain with you only for 2 years. You will not get the full benefit of this particular asset, because after 2 years you have to return back the asset. But if the useful economic uh, life is 10 years and you are getting this asset for 8 years or let us say for 9 years, you are not getting it for the entire useful life, but for 8 years, 9 years, aren't you taking full advantage of the asset? You are enjoying the full advantage of the asset. It means substantially all the risk and rewards are enjoyed by the lessee. And hence we can consider this as a finance lease. Finally, they are saying, and this is slightly technical now, they are saying that the present value of the lease payment covers substantial portion of the fair value of the leased asset. Okay, they are saying present value of the lease payments. It covers substantial portion. Again, substantial portion is not defined. We will understand substantial portion as 90% or more. Okay. So whatever are the lease payments, discount it and find out the present value. What is lease payments? We will discuss that. You may argue that we had earlier also discussed lease payments. Yes, but those lease payments were from the viewpoint of the lessee. We'll have to revisit the, we will have to revisit the concept of lease payments. But this time you'll have to understand it from the viewpoint of the lesser. They are saying that the present value of the lease payments covers substantial portion of the fair value of the leased asset. So let us say the fair value of the leased asset is 10 lakhs and you are calculating this present value of the lease payments. Present value of the lease payments is turning out to be 9 lakh 50 thousand. It is covering 90 percent or more. Then also we will consider this as a finance lease. 
what basically this reveals is that whatever is the fair value of the asset it is getting recovered from the lease payments understand this if you are a lesser you will have to first make an investment in the asset for example i want to be a lesser if i want to be a lesser it means i will have to provide an asset to you when can i provide an asset to you if i own that particular asset so fair value of this asset is 10 lakhs so first i will have to invest 10 lakhs in this asset right i'll invest 10 lakhs so my 10 lakh rupees is blocked and then i'm giving this particular asset to you let us say for the entire useful economic life think in that way i'm giving it to you for the entire economic life or let's say i'm giving it to you for eight years so first i'm investing 10 lakhs and then i'm giving you this particular asset for eight years i know that at the end of the eighth year when you will return this asset to me there will not be much of useful economic life left so only residuary value is what i will get so tell me as a lesser how will i design this entire lease arrangement i know that at the end of the eighth year when you will return the asset back to me except for residual value i will not get much so as a lesser i will design the lease agreement in such a way that i am able to recover this 10 lakhs understand my 10 lakhs are blocked i purchased this asset for 10 lakhs then i'm giving this asset to you for eight years my 10 lakhs is blocked so i will charge the lease rent lease rent is nothing but the lease payments i will charge the lease rent in such a way that this 10 lakhs is substantially getting recovered you get my point otherwise i will incur a loss if i charge a very low amount of lease rent and if i am not able to recover my 10 lakhs of rupees then i will incur a loss as a lesser obviously i will not do i am a rational person so i will design the lease payments in such a way that whatever is the fair value of the asset the fair value of the asset is getting recovered if not entirely substantial portion 90 percent or more so that's the reason they say that present value of the lease payment covers substantial portion of the fair value of the leased asset you're using the term present value over here right you say present value if you say present value that means you will need a discount rate so what shall be the discount rate they say interest rate implicit in lease from viewpoint of the lesser is used as a discount rate you have to use interest rate implicit in the lease earlier also when we had discussed this particular point from the viewpoint of the lessee at that time also we had said that the first choice for a discount rate is interest rate implicit in lease if the interest rate implicit in lease is not readily available then the lessee will use the incremental rate of borrowing but then that was for the books of the lessee lessee may or may not know that at what rate interest has been charged by the lesser but the lesser cannot say that i do not know at what rate i am charging the interest you get my point lessee is given a choice of discount rate lessee can use interest rate implicit in lease if readily determinable or incremental rate of borrowing incremental rate of borrowing is not available to the lesser lessee can say that i do not know what is the rate that has been charged by the lesser but if you are the lesser you cannot refuse you cannot deny that i do not know what is the rate obviously as a lesser you know what is the rate that you are charging so whatever is the interest rate implicit in lease you have to use that as discount rate what is this interest rate implicit in lease if i jump a little bit interest rate implicit in the lease is nothing but internal rate of return it is irr in capital budgeting you know what is irr isn't it irr is such a discount rate which will make npv zero right we say irr is a rate where npv becomes zero and tell me when will npv become zero when the present value of cash inflows becomes equal to the present value of cash outflow when present value of cash inflow cash outflows both are exactly the same npv becomes zero irr is such a discount rate which will make the 
cash inflows and cash outflows present values equal. That is what is interest rate implicit in lease over here. Now, they are saying, we'll read it now. They are saying, this is that discount rate which at inception of the lease tenure makes present value of gross investment equal to the sum of fair value of the leased asset and the initial direct cost of the lesser. Again, there is a technical term used over here, which is gross investment. We'll be discussing this as we are proceeding ahead. But gross investment, understand in this way. Gross investment is the lease receipts or the lease payments and unguaranteed residual value. It's slightly, uh, what you can say, it's a technical jargon, but try to understand this. Gross investment, we will discuss that, as I said, as we are proceeding ahead, we will be discussing that. But you will understand gross investment as lease payments. India's 116 uses the word lease payments, but to be very honest, as far as a lesser is considered, it is a lease receipt and not really a lease payment. But still, they continue using the word lease payments. Plus, unguaranteed residual value. Okay, they say it is unguaranteed residual value. For the moment, just consider this. As we proceed ahead, I'll go in more details of what exactly it is. But as I was saying, these are lease payments agreed but as far as a lesser is considered you should consider this as a lease receipt and this is the unguaranteed i'm writing it again unguaranteed residual value lease receipt is nothing but a cash inflow okay and residual value is what you will get when you will sell the asset so this is also nothing but a cash inflow okay so when you say sigma PVCI over here, this is actually representing the gross investment. You get my point? It is a gross investment. And then they are saying it will be made equal to the sum of fair value of the leased asset. Okay, fair value of the leased asset. Think in this way now. Fair value of the leased asset. This is the cost of buying that asset. As I said earlier that there is an item of PP which is costing 10 lakhs of rupees. Let's assume that the cost and the fair value is the same. So I am paying 10 lakhs. So my 10 lakhs are invested. That's nothing but the fair value. And on top of that, I have to also incur some direct costs. Tell me. Fair value is nothing but a cash outflow. And this direct costs are also cash outflow. So here is the PVCO. PVCO is fair value of leased asset plus initial direct costs and we are making it equal see they are saying that this is the discount rate which at the inception of the lease tenure makes makes present value of gross investment equal to the sum of gross investment should be made equal to the fair value right this is what it is the present value of gross investment will become equal to the fair value of the leased asset plus initial direct cost Gross investment are the cash inflows that the leaser, uh, that the lesser will get. Leased assets, fair value and the initial direct costs are basically your expenses. They are your cash outflows. I'm making the present value of cash inflow equal to the present value of the cash outflow. This is nothing but, this is nothing but calculation of IRR. That's the reason we are saying that interest rate implicit in the lease is nothing but IRR of the lesser. Getting it? More about gross investment, more about the, what we can say, present value, how the present value of gross investment will be determined, more about how it will be presented in the balance sheet in our PNL as we discuss further. But this is just trying to give you a rough idea that what exactly is the interest rate implicit in the lease. And finally, what's an operating lease, right? We will classify the lease into finance lease and operating lease. So what's an operating lease? Operating lease obviously is a lease which is other than finance lease. Finance lease is substantially transferring the risk and rewards incident to ownership to the lessee. But when such a thing does not happen, we consider that to be an operating lease. In other words, you have to basically figure out whether the lease is finance lease or not. 
if it is not a finance lease by default it will become an operating lease so they say it is a lease that does not transfer substantially does not transfer right that's the words does not transfer substantially all the risk and rewards incident to ownership of an underlying asset. 